<laughs> what? Oh. No, it's not gonna be one of those type of reaction videos. Let's just get right into these European and Australian trailers that are new to me and might be new to you as well. Okay, so this first one's not as crazy as the others. I just love the craftsmanship. I love that side entry door right there. That interior, it's got like a nautical inspired look. These slide out kitchens are pretty common these days, especially overseas. But that is not common. You guys see that that's, so it slides out like most trailers do, but it can also be used when it's inside the trailer. Uh, those Apache trailers from the 60s and 70s, those hard shell pop-ups, they have that same design and that's something we've been looking for and we can't figure out why more manufacturers are not incorporating that into their design. It just makes sense. I like when they take wood, put it over stuff so you can have extra space. Leather blackout curtains, that makes sense. That's gonna stop all the light. It looks good too. Oh, the car that comes with it is cute too. Oh, in the castle. That's where I want to go. Oh, look at that. Just love the shape of this. Oh, that's a little car pulling it too. Man, I want their life. <laughs> so you guys catch that? Did you see that condensation on the window? That's pretty good. So this thing's 14,600 euros. So that's, um, what, 15,800 US about. Many of you guys have probably seen this one. When I first saw this, I thought, man, this looks a lot like a tab trailer here in the States. It's like a teardrop design, but a little higher. This one's a little more round. Oh, okay, it's too round. Very clean lines. But then, what? Every time I see this, that's crazy. So I don't even really want to watch the bower, but I don't really know how to skip the bower. Okay, fine, I'll watch. I'll watch a little bit. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> I love this. I hope this gets picked up here in North America. I hope people start doing this. So this is the 3X model here. So that's four to 12 meters squared. So that'd be what, 12 to 38, 39 feet. And then this 2X model also starts at four meters, but only expands to eight. So like, if it was me, I'd get the one that expands the most because they're both gonna get down to the same size. And for us, it's about having a small trailer for storage, for towing, camp spots, but I wouldn't mind the extra space. So this is Opus. Uh, this is an Australian company that is now all over the states uh, selling these. Uh, we're gonna look more at these off-road pop-up style trailers. Hmm, I don't know, it's too off-roady. Too boy, too guy. Uh, the more I get into this overlanding stuff, I think we could do this. I like this. Now did you catch, this is the unique part. Did you catch that? 90 seconds inflation, what, is, what does that even mean? Slide out kitchen, love the extra storage there on the tongue. You can't have enough store, you can't have too much storage. Now this video, I thought it was from Australia, it looks like it, but it was shot in Canada, I mean in California. Suspension was independent. And there she goes. <laughs> now, I, the only thing I'd wonder about is wind. How would that hold up? But I mean, it's for Australia. I think they have, whoa, eight foot ceilings. Are you kidding me? What are you gonna do with those eight foot ceilings? Eight foot ceiling, that's nice. Let me rewind this a little bit. Yeah, so those of you who are tall, you're not gonna have any issues uh, getting in this trailer. And it looks like it comes with a uh, entertainment system, a projector and screen. Love that this has four burners. You, that's pretty unheard of. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this is like, this is a man's heaven right here. Dometic fridge, that's pretty common. Yeah, those are neat little, they seem to have everything. So this one's an older trailer. Uh, it's, what I like about it, it's just really one feature that I think is neat, and it's that pop top. 
Really, what we found in a teardrop trailer is all you need is one tiny spot to get dressed and do some isolated activities. So why not keep the profile of the trailer down and just make a little pop top and that's what they did. Also like this rear door. I don't know why, I don't know if they help things. They just look cool, it's different. Like these tents and awnings that they're integrating into these. Seems like Europe really thinks about their side entry tents before they put out their models. All right, this next one, you guys have probably seen this. This is a pretty crazy trailer. So you can tell just by looking at it, I think the whole thing's like rhino line, but. Oh, too manly. Nope, not for me. It looks like a military tank. This video looks like they're trying to get this trailer stuck. So look at that travel. So those hydraulics, they say it's like 11 to 12 inches of travel. So you can pull up to your campsite and like not even worry about level. You can find level right away. Now you see that? I'm gonna pause that there, bring it back. That was an air filter that's supposed to pressurize the cabin so that you're not getting dirt and dust in when you're going out on your adventures. Like these guys thought of everything. And then this one surprised me. I thought it was gonna be like this utilitarian design on the inside and it's actually got a feminine touch. It's very modern though. Oh look, and it even fits kids, two kids. My wife would love this interior in that galley kitchen. Okay, that's the one for me. You guys have probably seen these showers. These are pretty common. They're like $450, but they pop right out. There's a guy on YouTube who makes his own. It's like a three minute video. I'll put it in the description for you guys. Love that they have the generator being able to be stored within the trailer. So many people talk about it getting taken off the tongue. So this price is not as high as I thought it would be, 59,000 Australian. So that's like, I don't even know what that is, 37,000 American. Now I'm gonna go to another expensive trailer before we get to the more affordable ones, thought we'd get the expensive ones out of the way. I like the like teak floor, stained wood. It's look like a little Asian micro, oh my goodness, look at that skylight. Oh, I love that the top opens up. That is huge. It doesn't have a kitchen. I like the aluminum, the rivets give it kind of a tough look. It looks like a horse carriage. Oh, and the galley, yeah. I love galleys. And look at the top of that, that gives you a lot of coverage from the rain. Oh my goodness, I didn't even notice this. Look at the size of that guy, let me back that up. That is one small trailer. You see it next to that guy? There's that skylight again, that thing is huge. Is that pulled with a little mini? Yeah, that's a small. That skylight can be completely open. This looks more like a cigar magazine or GQ than a trailer. It's 100% Dutch design. I like that. Just kidding, I don't care. <laughs> wow, that's a nice tent. I love these custom tents and designs. So look at the price on this guy, 48,500 euros. That's like 52,000 US. That's for its high end model. The basic one's 39,000 euros. But this is what I like. They have a model called the Shell and it's almost 50% less than their high end model. Then they do the whole exterior and leave the interior for you to do yourself. And for me, uh, being a bit of a frugal guy, I love the idea of a trailer that doesn't cost too much and I love the idea of being able to design it the way I want it to be. So I would love if more manufacturers in, the, in North America started doing this. So I said I'd get two more affordable campers. These are the Marlin campers from Australia. They've been around for quite some time. Marlin camper, it has a nice ring to it. Very simple. Uh, you're not gonna find as much independent suspension. It's more like leaf springs and lighter aluminum. And um, I like the storage on these. Love that the tents just pop right up and you have this great outdoor living space. Again, more storage. But they look like they're ready for an adventure. Now look at these prices. That first two person trailer goes for like 3,500 US. And that six person all the way to the highest one, it's like 5,600 US. Uh, so this is an affordable trailer. I love these entry level trailers for people. 
Got to get some some of these prices down in the state so people can get into this game, get into this lifestyle. This trailer I love. This one is unique. It's a great way to say it. This one's made in Denmark. As you see, they have a bike pulled trailer, and then they have a trailer that can be pulled by a smart car. Oh, a bike camper! Mwah. So this is it, all compact. What you'd be driving down the street, and then that's it, open up. It's tiny. <laughs> It's so narrow. I love it. Okay, I want a bike camper. It's kind of got like a Nautilus shape, doesn't it? It's that guy. It's that guy Photoshop. I think I like the bike camper, except for the guy there. Oh, you guys should see that guy's face. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's really uh, selling hey. it to me. <laughs> so this thing is affordable too. 4,290 US for the bike camper, and then about 7,000 for the car. I love it when it's opened up. It's so tidy. This would definitely turn heads when you're going down the road. Like, what is that? Oh, that interior is pretty big. You got a table there, and then you also have that bench seat, and then it all seems to convert into the bed. And it doesn't look that claustrophobic, to be honest. I like it. I like it. T van. This is another Australian camper, I believe, a concept trailer. It looks like something out of Star Wars. The Batwing awning. Might also fly too if you want it to. Love the rear entry tent. You can see there it's up off the ground. That's what I like, like keeping you insulated off that cold ground or well, I guess in Australia, keeping you away from the bugs, the snakes. Self extraction mat on the back. Oh, that's unique. That looked really heavy. Did that look really heavy when that guy pulled that open? This one looks different. This isn't even the same model. Or it's got a different rear than that first one. Ah, oh, it's a tent. So I'm thinking the tent maybe doesn't come with it. But again, see it off the ground there? That's nice. T-bar, T-bike, T-rack. So this is a trailer I think you guys are all gonna be into. Uh, this is now in the States. It's by Heimer. I think I'm pronouncing that right, but it's Araba. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right in Europe. So like the sister company, but same trailer that's in Europe. They're now selling it here in the States. At 15 feet, five inches, this is basically a Casita or a Scamp. They're 16 feet model. It's too big, too big for us. But it's got that hybrid ceiling, 2,400 pounds. You could pull that with any SUV. Now look at this, an egg trailer that has storage. Look at all that external storage. I mean, these small campers, if you can keep things outside and get it stored underneath all the fun gear you bring out, that would just make such a less cluttered interior. Love that they don't have a fiberglass over the window that, you know, cause this you can see through your windows when you're towing it down the road. If you don't have to put a cover on it, it means it's plastic. Six foot five inches, so you tall guys can be in this. Minus that guy who writes in our comment section who's six foot six looking for a Teardrop with a bathroom. Sorry, bud. This isn't gonna work, but a king-size bed. That's nice And then a second bed too. Looks like it's converted from the table area Everybody likes their full bathrooms We don't have one. We don't use them, but I see the advantage So is that the cassette toilet from the beginning like it drops into the cassette or there's wait a minute look at this I didn't even see this the first time I went through it is saying it is garage friendly only seven foot four inches I'm gonna go, hold on, I'm gonna measure that quick. We were four inches off. So our garage was seven foot. I quickly Googled it, uh, common garage in the States, it says it's seven foot, uh, but I don't know if that's seven foot, seven foot six. Um, so it'll be interesting if this does fit in most people's garage. These are some old photos from Ariba. I think I'm probably saying that wrong, but of the trailers they've made over the years and it just it's gonna help you to move into this next trailer they make a vintage trailer that actually feels like it pulled something from the past forward there's vintage ones or is this a new one i'm confused wait this thing's beautiful look at those baby moons I just, it looks modern and it looks old it looks like something you'd want to take up to the to the resort I could definitely be seen in a trailer like that. All right, this trailer, 
uh, as a German trailer. They make smaller ones. This one really isn't that small, but there was a feature I wanted you to see that I thought was really neat. It's kind of the juxtaposition between the clean lines of the inside and then its utilitarian function. I love that rear entry, nice and clean, but I love the Scandinavian look inside. Ooh, it's really pretty on the inside. But it's a toy hauler. All our toy haulers here just look so rugged. They all look like utility trailers. This one looks like a home you want to stay in. Look at that space. And that bed, this one's pretty neat. So this bed raises up so that you can also sleep people below, but it allows people to walk in and out through that little hall. So then you're not bothering people in the middle of the night. Toys can come in and out, but you still have this functional area. All right, this is the barefoot trailer. Many of you are probably familiar with this one. This is the trailer that's been very popular over in Europe and is now coming to the States. I think New Camp's selling it. Either they already are, or it's coming out this year. Kind of looks like a scamp casita, an egg camper, but it's got kind of a Jetson look. It's kind of cute. It's kind of like a little egg. It's just cool. Uh, simple, it's lightweight. I love this where they cover the burners and the sink. Do you guys recognize this? So these shelves are taken from another style, like those 60s, 70s Shasta trailers. It looks just like it. I'll put up a picture here of the old ones, see if you think they look a lot alike. Look at those big windows, a lot of air getting into these. So this one's kind of neat. This is the Bush Lapa out of Australia and it is just purely utilitarian. I mean, these things look like they come out of a military convoy. And I like that. I like, like people in Alaska would love a trailer like this. There's just no extras. It's just does what it needs. Doesn't that look like a military barracks or something? <laughs> but it's just made to handle abuse and, and do what they need to do. There's so many models of this trailer. I was just going through online. They have tons of different shapes and heights and for so many different amounts of people. Um, these look to be pretty popular over there. But what I liked were these tents. They found a way to really expand your outdoor space. Look at that. All right, this one is just crazy. I had to show you what's coming out of China right now. These are trailers being manufactured in China and they're going over to like Australia and New Zealand. And I just, you gotta see like the large scale manufacturing that is taking place. And these trailers are pretty cool looking. Definitely beefy, they look like a Humvee with a hybrid pop top on it. And they look like they get pretty tall once you pop that top up. But look at that facility. They are cranking these things out. And then they're wrapping them up, putting them on a barge, uh, throwing them in a shipping container and sending them off to another continent. So these are not our typical videos, obviously. We're gonna get back to doing our normal Alaskan adventures. But if you guys ever wanna see more of these, like the American, what I call boutique, you know, small scale trailer manufacturers, they're doing some awesome things. As usual, subscribe, share this video with those you think would like it, and we'll see you on the next episode. What? Oh, what?